Hello, this is Funks My Name from Lost Marble Forum. I just wanted to uh, take you through some new functions of Anime Studio Pro 9, uh, most exciting of which is the Smart Bones. Um, one thing you'll very quickly notice is one of the changes is that um, actions are now ordered um, in different tabs. Regular multi-frame actions are here. Uh, single frame actions are in morphs and they're the ones that you use with the um, with the blend morphs um, dialog box which is now persistent so it will stay on the screen while you're using it which is really handy until you close it um, and smart bones which is the most exciting feature of all um, so I'll, I'll just jump straight into it um, Basically, you can see that this is a very, very simple rig um, for a leg. It's only got three bones. You can see how the, the joints are folding over each other and the volume's being lost here. Um, what smart bones in their basic form allow us to do is to fix all these problems so they're automatically adjusted when um, when we just move a bone. So it's, it's a, a really, really powerful feature that lets you... Um, just set up a, a, a rig once and then hopefully alleviate most, if not all, of the second pass point motion fixing that you would have to do otherwise in order to, to get volume back in your joints and, and that sort of thing. So the first thing to note is that to create a smart bone you need to uh, name the action the same as the bone. Now, when they're automatically named, they're numbered and lettered, and that's fine. Um, but I've just named it foot, so I need to create an action called foot. Um, smart bones have uh, two different actions for either direction of a bone's rotation. So the first thing you need to do is define which direction we're working with in this particular um, action. It doesn't matter which direction we choose as long as we choose one and then on the next um, action for this bone we'll set the other direction so I put it to its extreme position here and um, what I'm going to do is just at frame one which is where it is at the moment adjust the curvature and the position uh, just to fix up this this motion here a little bit. Now that would be great in itself except um, as you ex expect hold on I've got this I can't get this into the screen now as you can expect um, not necessarily is the rotation going to be what we want all the way along. I mean, in this case, it's a very simple motion, so I'll just leave it at that for now and move up to the calf. But you'll see something a bit more, more complicated here. So I've got the folding over here. So let's do the extreme position by adding an action called calf. You'll notice now that because it's named the same as a bone, it's automatically in smart bones. And if you go into the, the other tabs, apart from all obviously, um, it's not showing. So it's automatically organized where that's got to go. Um, so the really cool thing about, um, about smart actions is, uh, let's see, if I, bend this. I'm actually going to move this over to an arbitrary frame down the down the line. So now I've got this movement. In fact at this point I'm just going to turn the leg up as well. So I'm only dealing with a, with a calf movement. Now you'll see that all along this the bone is in different positions and when it gets to its extreme position that's where we're going to change the points to begin with. So let's just get in here, fix the, the volume of the of the muscle 
Um, this part of the backside will be part of the uh, thigh action, so I'm just going to leave that for now. But so what was saying was that as it's rotating, it's actually done a pretty good job of it. But um, there there will be cases where, like halfway along here, the volume's already been lost, and then it starts bending over. So what we can do is just visually go to the point where we want to add another point of change and then move it there at that point. So up to that point it mixes to that and then past it it mixes to this one. And here, I, because I moved a point I didn't previously move, I'm just going to fix that there. So now the joint is working much, much nicer. Let's say here it's still a little bit too bulky. So I'm going to change the curvature of this point. Okay, so as it's getting more squished up, it's gaining. And you can see that we're actually creating what would be a complete range of animation for these points. But once we've set it up once, every time I rotate this bone at any of these positions is going to use this current setup for that current keyframe. So it's, it's an amazing, amazingly powerful thing. Um, so that's the calf, let's say there, as, as it squeezes it. Well, I mean, I'm, I maybe didn't need to make this change here. So now, the other thing is, you'll notice now that when I rotate this bone, the calf joint is working really, really nicely, unlike it was before. And now let's move up to the thigh bone. I'm just going to call this and this I'll show you this is the first of the bones um, that I've shown you that will actually rotate in both ways so um, I'm going to move it to the extreme up position and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn onion skinning on I'm going to change, move this over here again now the, the amount of frames you move it forward to doesn't really matter um, as long as you leave it enough resolution, so there are frames for for the the amount of rotation that um, compensates. So you, it, it's up to you how many positions you want to put between this one and that one. Um, so I just you know just move it up to what's already on your screen makes your life a little bit easier. Now, if I enable onion skin and I put it down here. By default, the onion skin just shows a line, and um, onion skins for lines before the action are shown red and after are shown green, which is a, a really handy enhancement. But not only that, now um, Anime Studio 9 also supports um, non-outline uh, onion skinning. So this is the start position of the leg that I can see in a ghost, which makes it really, really easy for me to now move this around so let's just I'm just gonna move this here let's leave a bit of space there actually this point I'm going to bring back to its normal position but what I'm trying to do is make it so the leg actually starts moving from the waist where it started which is just here as you see before, when I just rotated the bone, it was completely all over the place. So now I'm going to change the, the backside rotation. And this is pretty good for, for now. So now you'll notice that as it's rotating, halfway along it's kind of completely wrong. And then it gets to this point where it's correct again. So I'm just going halfway and adding another correction. So now this joint is working pretty nice. Let me just correct this again. OK. 
Okay, cool. So the next thing in this case, I'm going to add the rotation for the other direction. I'll start a new action called thigh space two, and that's the naming convention for creating smart bones, um, second smart bones. And again now, oops, what's happened? Uh, I created it while I was in the sub layer, which has always been the case. Uh, if you do that, it's not going to work. You need to go to the parent layer, and now, now it won't chuck me out as I go between the two layers. If I rotate this one back, um, my onion skinning is back is still on, so I'm just going to move this forward up here as I did before, and go up here, and I can see the ghosting again. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the the back side. I'm going to fix the front waist, just so we've got we've got a nice bit of volume there. And again, you see that at this point it's it's moved out of the way. But I can just fix this, and this is just an amazing thing that you just do once when you're first rigging, and then hopefully you just won't have to correct any of these things ever again. So that's pretty good. So now going to the main line. Let's turn onion skinning off. Let's turn this off. I'm just going to go back to the bone layer. You'll see that moving the the leg it looks amazing. It's just this just couldn't actually be done before. This looks like some kind of male ballet dancer or something. Um, so yeah, I mean that's the introduction to smart bones. There's loads more stuff you can do with it um, because obviously you can control any points with a bone. It doesn't actually have to be rigged. So um, you know, as an example, which is is going to be a bit of a weird example, but let's say. I create a bone here. <laughs> Let me think. I create a oh, oh that's okay. I create a bone. Oh no, that's not okay. Let's go back here. I create a bone which has got no influence, so it's not going to affect anything. And say I call it. Um, I don't know. Backside, and what I'll do is I'll add an action called backside, and what I want to do is define a direction for for this bone. So I'll move it down here, and the extent to which you move this bone will be the hundred percent point of that action. So I mean, really, you can rotate it three hundred and sixty degrees, have three hundred and six move this frame to. 360 instead of 144 and you could define a different action or a different variation of face and mouth movements um, to every single frame of that and just control it with a bone but I'm getting ahead of myself let me just move this back here okay so now it's rotating there and what I want to do is define the size of his backside or hers I suppose based on this bone so Wrong point over here. I'm just gonna sharpen this point. <laughs> this is a bit of a weird idea, but um, okay. So as I change this bone, it will change the size of his backside <laughs> if that's what you want to do. So now I've got these actions here. All I need to do is change this this is already at 15 minutes so I'm probably going to stop right here but you get the idea you you've got you can create really complex complex uh, rigs that automatically fix themselves um, as well as adjusting existing points even though they're not affected by the actual bones motion just by 
creating bones in the same way that you use morph dials. Um, at this point, only uh, line width, curvature, and point motion is supported by these bones, but I believe that in later iterations, um, we're going to be able to control other bones by turning action bones, which will be amazing because this backside correction could be turned whenever you turn the thigh in a certain direction it will automatically rotate this one and correct its position so we'll be able to to create such complex rigs like we've never seen before and um, if you just wait to see some of the the work Selgin's been doing <coughs> during the beta period just with this it, it will blow your mind but I'm not going to uh, take the wind out of his sails by telling you um, the amazing things he's been getting up to but um, I look forward to seeing your reactions to those so um, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I hope you understand how smart bones work a little better uh, if you have any questions uh, I'll start a forum post and um, I look forward to seeing you on the forum cheers